Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is a, a first ever event for us here at Pilgrims. Uh, I think it promises to be to be really uh, insightful and, and educational. We have a panel of um, four people up on the stage here that are all associated uh, with the store and with the, the wellness clinic here in the store as well. And they also have um, very uh, busy, uh, you know, professional practices of their own. I'm going to let them uh, give a uh, a little more in-depth uh, introduction for themselves than I will uh, here in just a moment. What we have is this is going to be an, an open discussion, an open panel, really. So the way we'd like it to work is that it's very interactive. This is not a monologue lecture seminar. This is a, a two-way, multiple-way conversation. So uh, I'm hoping that you've uh, brought some, some good uh, personal questions. Uh, Oh, I want to say to stump the panel, but that, that's, that's not what this is supposed to be. <laughs> um, that would be fun if you have a tough one. But, um, so anyway, we also, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have the Pilgrim's Wellness Center as a clinic. We have five treatment rooms here uh, just outside here in the, in the vitamin section. A lot of people don't know that. But we offer every, uh, services, everything from chiropractic, acupuncture, psychotherapy, um, carotid uh, and abdominal artery uh, stroke screening, uh, ultrasound for a technician from the hospital, um, weight loss, cooking classes, uh, massage. Uh, we, we offer quite a few things here. And we have a couple other uh, of those professionals here. Richard Hauser, a chiropractor, he's in the back. Jerry Wiley's a Feldenkrais uh, practitioner. And Julie McKernan is uh, our massage therapist here. And so they will uh, likely chime in as well. So if you hear a voice coming from the back of the room, that's just one of the other professionals here that, that have something to, to add. We are, um, we are filming this event. Um, we have a YouTube site, and you can get there from our, uh, from our website. And we have about 40 videos of lectures and seminars that we've um, given here over the years. There's a lot of the speakers up on the wall there that we've had. This event, uh, we're not going to point the camera on you, so um, we don't want to add any stress uh, for you to feel that you're going to be up on YouTube uh, asking questions. But what we would like to do, <clears throat> for the benefit of any potential viewers uh, of this, is I have a little microphone that I'd like to walk around and to hand you when you have a question. So if you can just speak into the mic, uh, there's a little blue light on top. That's where the microphone is. Try to stay away from the blue light. That's going to make a lot of noise on the microphone. Um, but if you can speak into there, we can get your question on the video. But like I said, we won't, we won't be zooming in on you. Um, also, after immediately following this, from noon to 3 p.m., we have uh, a, well, a guided tour of the Wellness Center. If you choose to go on a tour, you can enter a raffle, and we have over $500 of... Um, uh, services that you can win. So for example, there's a massage. Um, you could win a massage. You could win a visit with Dr. Toby, a naturopathic or acupuncture visit, and, a, and so forth. So that will be immediately following this lecture. You can find anyone here on the panel, find myself. There's another woman out there that will probably be behind the counter in the wellness center. She's blonde hair. Her name is Siggy. She can take you on a tour as well. So uh, I think we're ready to get going here. Uh, on the far side, we have, um, I'm, like I said, I'll just be real brief, uh, Tina Hawk. She is a nutritional consultant. She does uh, a variety, she offers a variety of services. She's also a massage therapist, um, and she has a real uh, good emphasis on, on weight loss, total health recovery, and uh, cooking. She's a phenomenal chef. Dr. Toby Hallowitz is a naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist. He just recently uh, moved out here from New York. And he's got uh, a very fascinating story, and he's practicing here uh, in the Wellness Center, offering naturopathic services and acupuncture as well. And then here in the striped shirt, we have Ben Greenfield, who is uh, a, a kind of an internationally recognized expert in the, in the, in the field of endurance athletics and uh, fitness. So he is a fitness trainer, a nutritional consultant. He, he lectures and travels all over the world um, and is... Uh, has many uh, websites um, that you can check out. You can, you can grab his card, but uh, 
he's got a lot of really great things that you can plug into online. Uh, most of them are free, and it's really cool. And then Jeffrey Douglas here is, uh, is a psychotherapist here and is an author and I think originally from New York and, and does, um, does uh, oh, all sorts of counseling, does executive uh, management, executive training, does a variety of group uh, group um, retreats, I guess you would call it, on a whole variety of uh, personal growth. So uh, I really thought it would be really great to have someone like Jeffrey here because a lot of times, well, we could all relate to this in, in some way. It's, it's not that sometimes that we're missing the information. Uh, sometimes there's maybe some things that we're doing to self-sabotage ourselves or maybe we're mentally approaching a new health program or our health uh, in a way that really doesn't set us up for success. And of course, that's, that's Jeffrey's area of expertise. So um, I'm going to start with Jeffrey. Jeffrey, you can go ahead and introduce yourself real briefly. And we'll do quick introductions, and then we'll get started with your questions. Thanks, Joe. That was a nice segue. Um, it, it, it turns out that how we approach change is uh, probably as important as whatever uh, technique or program or prescription that we're using. And that's why I'm here and part of this team is to be able to support you all in where you're coming from when you make the changes. As you probably know from your own personal experiences when you've tried to make change, uh, a lifestyle change or um, losing weight or becoming more patient or whatever it might be, it's not easy to do. It's not a, um, uh, it turns out that will is, is an important ingredient and effort and intention, but um, we need to understand ourselves more than that uh, the exciting thing about change is it opens up an opportunity for greater uh, self-acceptance, self-love, uh, to heal things that have been there in the past that show up in patterns uh, that don't serve us well. Uh, so it's a very exciting process that uh, I invite you to be a, a part of in, in terms of including not just what you're doing, but where you're coming from. Is it coming from your heart or some other place? And what comes up for you as you go through these changes? Thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, I'm sure you've all spent the past few weeks thinking and writing down all the questions you're going to ask today. And you've come well prepared. <laughs> but just in case that's not the case, um, I know we're pretty soon after the New Year's here. So if you've set up resolutions for yourself, from a, a fitness standpoint or a body transformation standpoint, um, feel free to ask questions about what you're doing, maybe about the program that you're doing, about what kind of workouts you're planning on. Um, that's the reason that I got thrown onto this panel was to answer anything you, you kind of want to know when it comes to fitness. So if you've got questions, burning questions about working out, that type of thing, um, throw them on up here. and. You know, um, myself and, and the other fantastic panelists who are, who are up here are going to be able to, to help you out, but I'd love to hear some of those type of practical questions about your fitness, your exercise, your workouts, that type of stuff, and, and those are the kind of questions I'm here to answer for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Toby. Um, I'm a naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist, and I moved out here three about three or four months ago from uh, Buffalo, New York, western New York, and I brought the nice weather with me. Um, so one of the reasons I was brought out here was to, uh, a lot of people didn't realize that we had the wellness center inside Pilgrim's Market. And it, we're in a really unique situation here that we have the great um, organic and, and whole foods available to us and a lot of resources that other practitioners uh, don't have access to. And so... You know, one of my goals in coming out here is to take advantage of that and to um, really bring us together as a group and as a group of practitioners to be there to best serve you. So uh, just a little bit of background about naturopathic medicine because sometimes people don't know what that is. Um, we're licensed in uh, 16 states as primary care providers. That means we can do physical exams, lab work, imaging, prescribed pharmaceuticals. 
but our focus is on natural therapies, um, like botanical medicine, homeopathy, hydrotherapy, nutrition, diet, those types of things. And then I am um, licensed in acupuncture, and, and uh, acupuncture and Chinese medicine is a big part of my practice. Um, I do have a, a unique story um, of how I got into natural medicine, and, and um, I'd like to share that with you as we go through uh, when that time comes. Thanks, Toby. My name is Tina. Um, I've been doing nutrition since 2006. I firmly believe that food is medicine. And oftentimes a client will come to me and say, well, I really eat healthy. I just don't understand why I'm not losing weight. I'm not getting to my goal. And when I do a dietary analysis on their current diet, in fact, they're not balanced. You might be eating the right foods, but maybe in the wrong um, portions or um, in the wrong times of the day, um, maybe too much sugar even coming from fruit. So I go in and dissect all that for you and help you get more balanced. And I really believe that food is the foundation um, to good health. So um, just getting more knowledge about food and how it can work for you in your lifestyle um, can really help you reach your goals. Hi. Uh, yeah. I, hello. <laughs> okay. I'll kick this off with a question about joint supplements. I'm looking at you because I, my naturopath, maybe three or four years ago, I had a problem with cre my knees are creaking, and not necessarily that, but I just wanted to adjust joints and getting older, and I've been on glucosamine chondroitin MSM, um, Boswellia serrata and hyaluronic acid. Um, and I believe that's all addressing joints. Is that w what, what different things do they do? Or is there some other newer thing that you found? Well, there's a lot of different things that can be really helpful for your joint health. Uh, and when you talk nutritionally and, and specifically supplements, one of the most important things I feel is if you're taking these or any nutrients that you take the therapeutic levels so I really believe in like evidence-based um, evidence-based medicine that includes uh, nat naturopathic or natural medicine as well so if you're taking glucosamine I like to use the form that's been you know well studied and that's the glucosamine sulfate and you want to make sure you're getting you know the levels that have been done in studies so that's 1500 milligrams of glucosamine sulfate um, the chondroitin I think is an add-on make sure you're just getting the you know the 1500 milligrams of glucosamine sulfate um, MSM is is really helpful. Um, my focus usually when I'm dealing with joint pain, and I see a lot of uh, patients who have pain, is to um, uh, well address it on a number of different levels. Of course, I do acupuncture, and I found that to be really helpful. Um, making sure that you deal with inflammation in general, um, so you know natural anti-inflammatories. And I think you said you were taking. Uh, did you say Boswellia? Yes. Yeah, and that's a really good one, too. Again, taking therapeutic levels. I like the, um, the AKBA. Uh, it's, like, standardized to um, a component, in it, and that seems to work really well. And we do carry, um, at, at, and most places do carry this now. It's a um, curcumin extract that's bound to phosphatidylcholine. It goes by the name of Mariva, and a few different companies have that, and I like that one a lot, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> On a um, nutrition um, aspect there, you want to look at your diet as well. What's causing the inflammation? Are you eating excess amounts of sugar, alcohol, caffeine? So look at those things as well and not to just supplement on top of that because that, the supplement's only going to help so far, but you've got to clean up the diet as well. Those are really, really good suggestions. Um, and what I've found in many cases is that uh, popping a pill or changing up the diet can help with joint inflammation, but a lot of times it doesn't address the underlying issue, which can often be something going on biomechanically with your knee. Um, I had horrible knee pain three years ago, and 
um, since I do a lot of sports nutrition and I'm geeked out on supplements, I had access to all this, and I took almost everything you talked about. I was doing a glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, ginger, turmeric, curcumin, all these different anti-inflammatory extracts, cutting sugar out of my diet. And eventually, um, when I was actually looked at um, by somebody who really knew their biomechanics, it turned out that my main issue was a very, very weak VMO, which is the, the little quadriceps muscle that runs along the inside of the leg, and tight hamstrings. And, you know, I was doing all these other things, but it wasn't fixing the issue because even though the inflammation was getting shut down by the steps I was taking, every time I would start exercising again, it reared its ugly head just because I wasn't taking care of, of the underlying issues. So, um, you know, if, if it's a knee issue, you want to look into your quadriceps strength and the strength of the muscles that surround the knee and encapsulate it. You want to look into a lot of times your hamstring flexibility and your hip flexor flexibility, both of which can be addressed by doing something as simple as grabbing a yoga DVD and you know, doing that three or four times a week or popping into a yoga class a couple times a week. But think about biomechanics as well um, because even if you're doing everything that you can from an anti-inflammation standpoint, um, once you start moving again, walking, climbing stairs, if your knee is structured in a way that is going to allow inflammation to, to pop back up again, then you're you know, you're, you're kind of, kind of stuck in that state. So. Uh, the guy that, that I saw was the, uh, the orthopedic surgeon for the WSU football team. Um, he just sees athletes a lot and, you know, straightforward within 10 minutes, you know, with me on the table knew what I was, what I was looking at. A lot of times, um, you know, physical therapists, um, sports medicine physicians, orthopedic surgeons who aren't, knife happy and, and trigger happy on just wanting to do surgery as soon as as soon as you see something's wrong um those are all good people um what you want to look for is someone who who has a lot of experience that's what i found to be you know, no matter how many certifications or college degrees somebody has what it really comes down to is how many thousands of hours they've spent looking at people move and evaluating them so another really good guy who i go to a lot here locally is pz pierce silver in spokane um for like sports type of stuff in terms of, of evaluating joints. So. Our uh, Feldenkrais practitioner, Jerry, uh, is also really good at uh, helping to look at the biomechanics and helping you to correct that and helping your body to correct that. Um, also massage therapy along with yoga, Pilates, um, to help stretch, strengthen, and break down the, the scar tissue that's uh, making those muscles inflamed and um, causing stress on the joints is an added benefit along with with Pilates and yoga. You can see this is a really holistic answer. I mean, that's <laughs> that's one of the great things about putting the panel together is that that's really what true holism is about. When you talk about holistic medicine, integrated medicine is coming at these things from from a number of different angles. So we all have different thoughts on that. And, and yeah, that's really cool because um, the joint issue is something a lot of people can relate with, and, and all of you have spent a lot of time in health and. Even for someone like you, it can take years to figure out what it actually is, right? Or you finally go to someone, you tried everything else, and somebody has just the, the little trick. Uh, that was great. Uh, next question. Okay, here you go, sir. Good morning, and thank you for coming. This is really informative for me. Uh, I basically lost about 45 pounds in, let's say, about six months. and. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, well, I'm really concerned about muscle loss. And as you get older, you know you're going to have a muscle loss. I used to look like Schwarzenegger, but you know, unfortunately. <laughs> and but this is really my main concern: building back muscles. Is that possible? Can you do that? Actually, can you build back muscles once that you're you've lost as you age? You know, you just lose the. Uh, the flexibility and you know just the bulk the answer is yes <laughs> yeah the, the, that definitely is the answer is yes and um, one one of the the easy ways to go about it is to simply lift heavy stuff and I mean it, it gets more complicated than that you need, you need to take care of your body yeah. <laughs> like girlfriends is that what you said <laughs> actually <laughs> actually helps as you grow older, believe it or not, um, because the hormonal issue is, is huge in terms of, of putting on muscle. Um, <laughs> but, uh, 
but li- lifting is something that is really going to be the the best way to put on muscle and the the hormonal response to lifting also results in an elevation of a lot of the enzymes responsible for fat loss as well so uh, i would i would certainly be doing weight training um a lot of the older individuals i work with are doing weight training three or four times a week full body and um, for males also uh, testing and if testosterone levels are low working to optimize those and get testosterone levels back up because that's one of the things that really really helps older males especially be able to maintain muscle and put new muscle on so um, in addition to to full body weight training three or four times a week i would be um, doing something like a, a salivary testosterone panel and and getting that looked at as well so basically you uh, you're talking about resistance it's not necessarily you have to lift weights but some like isometrics or zumba i guess dancing whatever something just no. to you know you have not 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 zumba or, or pilates or yoga or spinning or anything that that would be kind of aerobic or cardiovascular literally um choosing a weight that's that's kind of hard for you to move around and doing multiple sets of anywhere in the range of 8 to 15 repetitions depending on how much weight you're actually lifting and actually going through and, and hitting every body part and you can start with basic stuff you can you can join a gym and just begin to do all the machines that you find at the gym you know go through and do them as a circuit and then when you get to the end do it again and make it a goal the first time you get there to go through it one time and then eventually work up to two times and three times and once you've done that move on to free weights dumbbells barbells heavy balls things of that nature um, but yeah you do need to be actually lifting not just not just doing cardio because it really doesn't put on muscle and the, the more muscle that you uh, create the faster you're going to also burn the fat and, and help with weight loss um, I have a background in working with competitive bodybuilders. Um, there's one thing I knew how to do is put on muscle and burn fat. Your nutrition is um, crucial. you got to make sure that you have a balanced diet and your protein, carbs, and fats, good quality protein, good quality fats, good quality carbohydrates. And not when you have that out of balance, it, you'll, you often see this, all of you do. You go in the gym and you see these people spinning their wills because they think calories in calories out that's not true calories are just a piece of the puzzle it it really comes down to having the proper foods and the proper balance and working with a nutritionist or someone like ben who does nutrition and fitness together um, can really help you take away the guesswork and stop spinning your wills in the gym and get some real guidance so you can get to your goal a lot faster and put on the muscle and burn the fat Uh, this is for Ben. Um, I have a dissected aorta, and it dissected during surgery. And my cardiologist in the other state we lived in, he said I could do whatever exercise I wanted. And then when I moved up here 10 years ago, it happened 12 years ago, he said, don't do any yoga, don't only walk. He said, don't do anything to put stress on my aorta. So I don't know which now. I You know, it's like, well, then he made me scared to do anything. So is does it put a lot of stress on your arteries when you exercise? My blood pressure is normal. And I also had another question, if there's anything, any supplements you can take to make your, the walls of your aorta stronger. Sure, the, the question was about a dissected aorta and whether or not exercise was actually indicated in a situation like that, whether it put too much stress on the arteries. And I guess my question back at you is, were you given any blood pressure or heart rate recommendations by, by your cardiac surgeon after you finished in terms of how high you could get your heart rate or how high you could get your blood pressure or anything of that nature? No. Okay. The reason I ask is I've worked with people post-surgery before, not for that condition, but in many cases the recommendation was not to exceed about 140 to 150 beats per minute when they were exercising. Um, interestingly, those are the same recommendations given to pregnant women a lot of the time. Um, and I believe that one of the reasons for that is because of the increases in blood pressure and increases in cardiovascular stress that occur above those heart rates 
approximately. Now, everybody's different in terms of your maximum heart rate and the maximum cardiovascular load that you're able to handle. Um, I, I can't say for sure based on what kind of surgery you had and the, the two different recommendations given to you by your cardiologists, whether or not you should be meeting those heart rates or even exceeding those heart rates. Um, so it's, it's a question that I'm not super comfortable answering unless I've actually seen recommendations from your docs. If, if I were in your shoes, I would go talk to both of them and tell them exactly the conundrum that you're in um, because um, they're physicians, they care about humans, they want to make sure that you're taken care of, and um, that's, that's the steps I would take is, is to do whatever I can to actually get them on the phone or email them or talk to them and find out. And if you do, in fact, are able to exercise, a lot of the gym equipment now, you can take your heart rate on the equipment, so you don't need a special equipment or anything like that, so that may help you once he gives you um, your guidance there. Um, so keep that in mind. And there are heart rate monitors as well that you can wear even when you're out walking on your own. The other thing you might want to do is some you know, personal research on it. I don't, everybody should know this, that you can go on to uh, PubMed and do your own research. So I'm sure there's research out there that will, will state whatever studies they found as far as exercise. If you just typed in you know, exercise and uh, dissecting aorta, you'll find some articles on there. So anyways, that website is www.pubmed.com. And I do lots and lots of research that way for my patients. So, you know, we get people come in with all sorts of things that, you know, nobody's ever heard of or I've never seen. And I try to figure out, like, what's going on? What, and then are there natural treatments for this and what's been studied? And that can give you some guidelines of where to look or if you understand the physiology of what's going on, even if nobody's done a study, say, on whatever curcumin and whatever condition you may have, for example. But, um, but it's it, one of the, the best things about, integrative alternative medicine is that it, it it's about empowering you uh, to take control of your health and control of your life and uh, you know ju not just doing whatever the doctor says but feeling comfortable with it understanding why and so I always try to do that with patients but I encourage you to do that too and there are a lot of resources and if any doctor has ever told you well there's just no research on whatever glucosamine that's not true you know there's lots and lots of research on natural therapies. It's just that a lot of um, allopathic or conventional doctors are not uh, trained in that or haven't taken the time to look. Um, as far as supplements, th there are, I worked with somebody before, um, I think I worked with, I've worked with Marfan syndrome before and I've worked with uh, uh, somebody else who's had the, the surgery that you had and I know there are some supplements that are helpful. I don't want to necessarily say which ones they are just uh, because I haven't reviewed it in a while, but anything that, you know, promotes the connective tissue, even probably something like glucosamine, and, uh, but there, there could even be some research on there too, so, but yes, I'm sure there's things that would be helpful for you and to help with the whole process of, you know, keeping clot formation and, and that type of thing, so, okay. Thank, thank you. Okay, my question is on weight loss. I've been doing um, jazzercise since September, three to four times a week, and I've been doing a point system, and nothing's really happening. But the other day, I stumbled across someone saying, "I have I have some skin growths, and and they're called cherry something. I can't remember, but they said you might have bromine poisoning. Have you ever heard of that? And they said that that can cause weight problems." I think you're talking about cherry angiomas. Yes. Uh, but I don't, I haven't heard of bromine poisoning. I mean, where would you be exposed to bromine, per se? Uh, is that used in, like, hot tubs? Well, they were mentioning that some bakery products, because of the wheat coming from the ground and then being, like, like the ground mineral or something and gas and that. Are you working in a bakery, or you're saying if you're eating baked goods? I eat baked goods. Well, see, that... <laughs> That's that's something we might want to look at. Yeah. So looking at your diet too, there's things that. Now I have had my diet looked at in nutrition. That's why they were wondering maybe it's psycho or something. But they're going, you're doing supposedly what you're supposed to, but there's things that are happening that are aren't good. Bake Pardon? You're continuing to eat baked goods? No, no, not now. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not part of the oh, diet. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
But it's like, it's, it's discouraging. It's becoming very discouraging. So I think some of the cycles coming in, because I'm doing all this and they're perplexed, I'm perplexed. And you go to just, you know, no offense, but the regular MD and it's like, oh, you're fine. Your blood tests are fine, but something's going on. Yeah, and that's a good point because I have a lot of people who come to see me who are in similar situations. Um, one of the things that I do is I take a really good history and I, I try to look and see what's out of balance. And, you know, sometimes it could be hormonal. Sometimes it could be uh, the diet that you're on. Just because, you know, it's somebody's diet and you're counting calories, to me that's not the most important thing. The most important thing for me is the, the quality of foods that you're eating. Um, so looking at that, of course, and, and, and looking at your diet, both. Uh, Tina and I, that's something that I think that's what all of us would do here and to see if there's some sort of modifications. Um, you know, you may be, you may be in, your, in the diet that you're doing and you're counting things, you may be having like artificial sweeteners, Nutra Sweet and Splendor, that's a really common thing. That doesn't help. Um, the, the other thing is uh, sometimes, I, be, because I do deal with a lot of nutritional supplements, there are certain supplements that I often recommend. Um, this might be a segue into that is that, um, uh, I like to use a product called Fucoxanthin, uh, which is uh, very um, good at uh, helping both with in decreasing insulin levels, leptin levels, um, decreasing your, your blood sugars, and also increasing your, um, your, your brown adipose tissue, which is fat that burns uh, calories. Um, and it's also really strongly anti-inflammatory and... Um, Let's see, it's anti-diabetic. So there's a lot of good things about that. But there are a lot of different supplements that could be helpful uh, in that. And, um, but again, when we're talking about exercise, one of the best things about exercise, and the research shows that doing more muscle or uh, strength training is actually probably better than something like the jazz. I do that two days a week. Another thing you might want to um, look at is food sensitivities or allergies. You could have... a an allergy to dairy or gluten that could be preventing you from losing weight. So looking at your history, like Toby had suggested, is um, where we could get it, you know, a better understanding of what's going on. And if I were you, I'd highly recommend food journaling. I do that. I have to do that already. Good, good. So if you do have somebody else, another nutritionist or um, Toby, look at, at your history and, and at your journal and your exercise journal as well. Um, to get a better understanding of what's going on. There are situations that, um, similar to yours, where somebody will come in and they've done everything to achieve, um, hopefully uh, achieve a weight loss, or um, more commonly what I see are um, stomach pain, stomach issues, where they've done everything and done all the tests and nothing showing up there in those situations and perhaps in your case as you're asking um, you know is there something else going on here beyond a strictly physical level and a couple of questions if you haven't already asked them might might be useful um, maybe a, a question of is there any part of me that um, is afraid to lose weight or doesn't want to lose weight. Um, the reason why I ask that question is because, uh, uh, I mean, the first glance, it, of course, I, I do. I've been trying everything I can, and I, I want to do that. But sometimes sitting with that question and giving it a little bit more space to, to percolate and um, see where it goes, be uh, open with it. Um, Sometimes things do come that uh, uh, could be very valuable. And that's why I said earlier that often change uh, is intimately involved with healing, healing something from the past that um, uh, hasn't been totally resolved. Um, and uh, the other thing that I might uh, ask, uh, which is a very common issue for most of us, is... Um, What's my stress level? Um, what do I tend to do with my stress? And is there a part of me asking for something more there? Um, that uh, uh, what we 
often do with our stress is to override it um, or uh, work like heck until we get a chance to relax and call it good. And sometimes our body is giving us a message that um, we want something more than that in terms of a response to stress. Uh, to stress. Uh, so the, the other question um, that uh, might, um, that includes these two questions and may address something that we haven't discussed or I haven't raised is um, if my body had a message for me by not losing weight, if I just listened to my body, and um, it, what is the message? Is it, what is it trying to tell me? And again, with something like this, it, I wouldn't um, expect something necessary to come right away. Sometimes it does. Something pops out. But these questions gain power when they're given uh, a time when you um, don't have a bunch of things on your mind, when you're taking a couple deep breaths and letting go of um, current uh, items that need to be done or whatever, where you're just spacious, relaxed, and um, maybe asking it several times. Sometimes it's fun to ask that question before you go to bed and see if a dream comes or something comes the next day. But to carry it around for a little while, if my body had a message for me um, about not losing weight, what might it be? Hey, Stu, can you real, real quickly, since, uh, since you were just talking about that, Jeffrey's going to be starting something uh, new that we've never done here, um, I think in the beginning of February. Would you just take a minute or two and uh, talk about that, um, that community group that you're going to be offering here? And we do have a flyer over here. First uh, and third Tuesday of each month from, um, what is it, 6.30 to 7.45. I haven't looked at this in a while. <laughs> um, uh, we're going we're gonna to meet here and um, offer a group, um, some group support with whatever you're, you're doing. The first part of the group uh, will be a brief presentation on common issues that come up when we're making lifestyle changes. Um, and particular, a particular emphasis, as I was saying uh, earlier when I was introducing myself, particular em emphasis on where we're making changes from. And um, when we make changes from our heart, from love, compassion, Changes tend to naturally occur. They're effortless. They're, um, they're much easier. When we make changes from a place of self-rejection, oh, I can't stand the way I look, or the, what I'm eating, or how I'm be behaving, those, those kinds of changes made in that regard don't tend to last, um, tend to be very difficult. And when you think about it, you really don't want a change to succeed in, in that way. I mean, do you want judgment to be uh, how you live? Um, do you really want to make changes based on self-rejection? And of course, when you ask it that way, the answer is no, and yet, it's often where we start. Of course, we don't want to have um, too much weight. Of course, we want to stop eating junk food. Of course, we want to be more patient with our kids, and we don't like it when that happens. But um, how we respond to that desire to change is very, very important. Um, it sets in motion the whole course of activity, how we approach the inevitable ups and downs. Change isn't linear. There are often um, setbacks. We often have to take several tries at it. And if we're starting from a place of rejection and self-criticism, 
when those things come up, those inevitable setbacks, then of course it just adds to more um, bad feelings about ourselves. So the other reason this group is being offered is not only to ensure a more successful outcome, but also to prevent you feeling worse about yourself as you go through, which is easy to happen, we've all been there, um, feeling uh, another failure or lack of success. So anyway, um, that's the intention of the group. Um, it's a lot easier to do changes with the support of other people that are going through the same thing. You don't feel as alone, feel as discouraged when you hear other people sharing similar challenges. There's tremendous power in that. The last thing is what we're wanting to offer here, uh, along with my colleagues and those in the, in the back that are also colleagues, is a truly a holistic approach where when we're making changes, we're working on a physical level, a, a psychological level, uh, an emotional level, spiritual level, a nutritional level, a biomechanical level. There's tremendous power when we look at the whole of who we are and approach change from that, that aspect versus uh, when we're excluding important parts of our, who we are and just looking at change one dimensionally. Who's got the next question? All right, Frank. I got a question uh, about oh. uh, cholesterol. Is that appropriate for Sure, we'll get you. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, if you could just, um, we're yeah. recording this. Okay. Um, uh, uh, rather than taking pharmaceutical uh, statins of doing red yeast, um, but tend to notice a cramp, late, lower leg cramping in, so during sleep at night, is there an alternative to the red yeast? Yeah, red yeast functions actually similarly to how um, the statins do, and that, that's one of the ways that they're successful. Um, and the pro problem with both the statins and the red yeast is that it depletes your CoQ10 levels, and uh, that can often lead to the, the cramping that you're experiencing. Uh, so definitely taking CoQ10 if you're not already doing that, at least 100 to 200 uh, milligrams a day can be helpful. Other things that have been shown to, to cause the cramping related to those is um, low vitamin D levels. People don't realize that, but vo um, and even it's an important point to know uh, with low back pain. People have cr you know chronic low back pain. Studies have shown uh, a relationship to low vitamin D levels, and then the importance of taking uh, getting your vitamin D levels up to therapeutic levels. So. Um, raise your hand if you've had your vitamin, if you're comfortable, raise your hand if you've had your vitamin D levels checked. So I think it's really, really important to get your vitamin D levels checked. It's one of the best things that you can do. We don't get enough sunlight here. We don't get enough vitamin D. And taking 400, 800 IUs of, of vitamin D is not enough. So, um, you know, a lot of times we need 5,000, 10,000. Um, but, but you don't want to have too much either. and That can be a problem. So more than what they say is 30 is not enough. Now, to more answer your question, though, uh, there are a lot of other alternatives. Uh, diet's really important. Um, uh, uh, there's a handful of other nutrients that are that are helpful for lowering cholesterol. Um, okay, and magnesium. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of success using magnesium for cramping. Usually, when I have patients who have leg cramp, I think in your case it's because of the the either the medication or the uh, um, or or the red yeast rice. But um, thank you. Okay. Um, question for Ben and Tina. Um, the number one ranked tennis pro right now recently went on a gluten-free diet and uh, attributes part of his success to that. And my question is, can just anyone benefit from a gluten-free or are there, I mean, I read a recent article that if you're not intolerant, it might not have any uh, benefits for you as an athlete or for your body. I just want to, before they answer that question, I just want to say the vitamin D testing, because a lot of people don't have access to that, we actually offer vitamin D testing now in the Wellness Center. Yeah, hey Frank, how's it going? Uh, yeah, uh, Djokovic um, went on like a 42 game win streak after he went gluten free, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that can, it can help a lot of people just because a lot of the foods that contain gluten also have a pretty significant effect on your blood sugar levels. Um, they tend to be really high in, in basically uh, wheat, germ, and gluten, and protein, 
which can cause a lot of digestive irritation. It can cause what's called leaky gut syndrome, which basically happens when the little hair-like fibers of, of this agglutinin protein end up kind of going right into your intestinal tract walls. Um, and there's a very, very significant gut-brain connection, meaning if you have gut inflammation, a lot of times you have reduced clarity of thought and reduced mental function, which for a game like tennis is pretty significant. So, um, yeah, there, there, are, there are a variety of benefits to going gluten-free. Um, I'll, I'll let Tina, who is, who is kind of our nutrition expert on the panel, speak up on this. But uh, one thing that I would recommend that you do is grab a copy of the book Wheat Belly and read the book Wheat Belly. It's really good in terms of outlining a lot of the issues with consuming some of the more popular foods that contain gluten. Thanks, Ben. Um, whenever I work with athletes, I definitely get them on a gluten-free um, diet. Um, it can cause also bloating. It can cause pain in the joints. So those are some other side effects that, that it can cause. And when you're an athlete and you're in pain, you're not going to function well. Um, I do choose a gluten-free diet. You'll also find gluten in a lot of processed foods. So by just avoiding the processed foods um, can significantly help. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely benefits as an athlete. But just even as a lifestyle client and someone who's trying to clean up their diet as well. So, yep. I guess one other quick thing to add in is don't go gluten-free and do what most people do and go buy a bunch of packaged gluten-free products because they're just as bad for your blood sugar as the gluten-based products. I know Joe probably cringes because you can get gluten-free chips and cookies and stuff like that in in a in a healthy grocery store. And granted, they're they're better for you than the gluten-filled alternative because you aren't having the problem with the gluten. But when it comes to blood sugar, um, they're just as bad for your for your waistline and and for fluctuating energy levels. So I mean, for an athlete about to head out for a competition, sure, have a gluten-free cookie instead of a regular cookie. But it just irks me when I see people who are trying to lose weight sitting at their desk eating a gluten-free cookie because they heard it was healthier. So there's still the blood sugar level issues. Yeah, and this needs to be talked about in this panel, so I think this is a good uh, time to introduce it. But people always ask, what's the best diet? And I think all of us up here would have a different sense of maybe what the best diet, the amount, you know, the ratios of fats, proteins, carbohydrates, and things like that. But my opinion, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to eat a whole foods diet and to avoid, you know, and, and don't worry about the car. Or the, I mean, it depends on where you're at and what you're trying to do. But in general, if you can get uh, off the SAD diet, who knows what the SAD diet stands for? It's really popular. Everybody does it. SAD diet, standard American diet. So if we get off the standard American diet and, and eat as much whole foods, uh, grass-fed meats, grass-fed, uh, you know, eggs or uh, dairy, cows that, that eat grass, pasture fed, uh, you're going to do, do amazing. <laughs> I think people are really confused um, at what is whole foods. I get that all the time. I'm like, well, it says whole grain on the package. Isn't that good for me? No, because it's highly processed, which means nutrients are, are being stripped from it, and then they fortify things, which means they try to put them back in, and they're not nearly as good as the whole form um, like rice for example versus rice bread the rice in its natural form is going to be better for you better for your body to metabolize than a bread that's highly processed so there is definitely a difference one easy way to start is if you're used to having your starch and maybe a veggie hopefully and then you know your meat let's let's start by picking a starch like who, you guys remember rice aroni, right? We've got like lots of different products out here that come in a box that are whole grain. They're just like rice or quinoa or amaranth. Or, there's all these other grains that are, those are whole foods. That's a whole grain. So make your starch from that. You know, and that's a boxed item, uh, but it's really healthy because it's just the whole grain that you're, that you're creating. Then, then find your vegetable. Maybe focus your dinner or your meal around the vegetable and see what's fresh and in, in season. And then, you know, grass-fed butter is great for you. Stay away from the margarines or e even the ones that say that they're healthy. Grass-fed butter is what we need. Uh, or, and um, 
it tastes great. So put it, if you need to do that to your vegetables, do that. But focus your meal around the seasonal vegetables. And then um, have, you know, if you, if you do eat protein or if you do eat meat, then have, you know, about meat around the size of like a deck of cards. And that's just a good rule to follow. Um, have, uh, you know, fresh salad three times a week, a big salad. Go to town on it. You know, and so proportions of healthy food, uh, you're going to get fuller. They've got the fiber in it. It's, it's going to expand in your stomach and your intestines, and you're going to feel full, and you're going to not want to eat as much. And, and you can snack on, the, you know, snack on your carrots and, and snack on these whole foods, and, and, and you're going to do so much better. Stay away from the, from the chocolates except for dark chocolate. Have a, a third of a bar of dark chocolate a day. Um, another whole food, a white potato. A white potato actually is really good for you. It's loaded in potassium. You get a ton of fiber from the skin. But the problem with the potato is they make it into a French fry, which they, you know, they deep fry it so it's loaded with saturated fat. Or you'll get an open potato that has tons of sour cream and cheese and bacon. So they actually destroy that potato. So eating it in its natural form is going to be the best thing for you. For Ben, I, it's kind of two questions. Uh, for Ben, I'm specifically interested. I've been to the gym several times, and I've got had several different trainers, and I seem to get different directions, which is very frustrating. Do you do, as a woman, the heavier reps? Do you increase? Do you do lower reps? I mean, how do you how do you know really what you're doing is, is for your goals? Because these trainers seem to be in abundance lately. It seems to be a good field to go into uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, I just get very frustrated because it's like one guy told me like, well, just do the lighter ones and do the more. No, you have to increase. You, and uh, my second part of my question is on stabilization with the, the fr uh, frustration you hear about. You know, you're on a diet and then you hear, oh, your body's got to stabilize because it's set more comfortable, even if it's at a higher weight, and so you have to reprogram it. Can you stabilize your weight? Well, they say that I've heard rumors that the body is comfortable at a certain weight, so you're fighting Mother Nature against it. So they Another come out. Word for, for plateauing. Plateauing, yes, and so they come out, but staying there forever, and then they come out with you know these things like HCG, which is to reprogram and other vitamins that are supposed to help reprogram the cells. So it's kind of twofold that, and is there a really hope? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first part of your question about what type of workout is best, basically, for, right, for, for, for an older woman wanting to lose weight. For right. an older woman wanting to lose weight, yeah, right. who's told different things because of the hormones and stuff like yeah. that. And kind of like we just talked about with diet, just getting started by eating healthy is a really, really good step. And similar to exercise, just getting started by moving is a really, really good step. You definitely don't want paralysis by analysis and to throw up your hands and not work out at all just because you're, you're getting advice from different directions and you just tell everybody to shut up and go for a walk. But um, in, in terms of what works really well, I've, I've worked with literally thousands of people and um, probably close to that in terms of older women helping you know, lose weight. Um, basically, I, I split exercise into three basic pillars. You have your, your kind of slower aerobic exercise. You have your harder cardio exercise, like hard, short cardio efforts. And then you have your weight training. And a mix of all three works really well. So that's why something like just doing, for example, jazzercise is not going to cut it when it comes to weight loss. Um, you want to mix different modes of exercise. And by doing a combination of aerobic exercise, harder cardio bursts, and weight training, you're hitting the three different energy systems that are going to respond really well in terms of weight loss. Now, the way that you set up your week is going to vary based on your personal schedule. But typically, what I have people doing is anywhere from three to five times per week. They're doing the slow, easy cardio, talking about like taking the dog out for a walk for 20 or 30 minutes or hopping on the bike in the basement for a half hour and watching your, your TiVo program from last night or whatever. But it's easy stuff, like a five or a six on a scale, one to 10. I have them doing that fasted on an empty stomach in the morning, okay? 
because to work out hard, to go out and weight train and do hard cardiovascular efforts without eating anything in the morning is hard. It's stressful on your body. It can make you eat a lot more later on in the day. But to do something easy like that before breakfast can actually help you burn a little bit of extra fat. So you've got that going on in the morning, and then later on in the day, typically in the afternoon or early evening when your metabolism is higher, when your body is a little bit warmer, the body temperature is higher, you tend to do better at weight training, better at shorter cardio cardiovascular efforts during that time, that's the time that you do either a weight training session or like a harder run or a series of, of harder you know, cycling intervals or elliptical trainer intervals or maybe a harder cardio class or something of that nature. And you're either doing that and alternating it each day with weight training or putting the two together and doing the weight training with the cardiovascular intervals combined. So that's an example of kind of a, a gold standard scenario that I would set up for somebody who is wanting to lose weight, lose weight a little bit more quickly, keep it off, would be you'd be doing something like that six days a week, the fasted cardio in the morning, harder efforts in the afternoon or early evening, and then you have one day, it's kind of a reset button for your adrenal glands, kind of help your body settle down a little bit. Typically that day is something like yoga, hot bath, massage, you know, some foam rollers, some things to kind of take care of your body so that you're not beating yourself up. Um, and then as far as the, the metabolism thing goes, um, typically, and, and Tina may have something to, to chime in with on this as well when it comes to like your metabolic set point, what I'll do in conjunction with that scenario is have people calorie cycling, meaning that you really are kind of restricting calories, typically really, really watching starches and carbohydrate intake for anywhere from four to six days of that training week, depending on how often you're exercising. And then you do have a couple days where you're basically like putting a little bit of extra calories into your body so that it doesn't set its metabolism lower due to like a long-term, almost like a starvation response. And don't get me wrong, you can't lower your metabolic rate by like, you know, eating three meals a day and not snacking or going a day without eating any food. But multiple, multiple weeks of very, very low calorie intake can cause your metabolism to get lower. And that's the reason why I recommend calorie cycling and doing something like calorie restriction four to six days a week and then just eating as you're hungry the other one to two days of the week. So, or one to three days of the week. Um, I agree with Ben doing the cardio in the morning on the empty stomach. Um, oftentimes we only have that one time to work out. So what I recommend for my clients is to do your cardio interval turn, um, training. You'll burn more fat that way on an empty stomach. If you have to do your weight training as well, um, I recommend at least a 200-calorie snack that has protein and high glycemic carbohydrates like parsnips. I know it might, might sound weird, but um, having that glycemic, the sugars in your diet at that time, your muscles are starving and they need that to build. They also need the proteins. So empty stomach, do your interval um, cardio training, have a light snack around 200 calories, and everybody's a little different. So someone who weighs 200 pounds versus somebody who weighs 125, your um, calorie requirement is going to be different. And then go into your weight training. Um, that's always been very, very successful with my clients in, in gaining muscle and burning fat. We basically just said the, the same thing, except Tina's recommendation was to take that weight training session that I put in the, in the early afternoon, or the, or the later afternoon, early evening, and kind of shove that down into your fasted cardio session so that we're not making your head spin with, with multiple recommendations. But that's if, that's if, that's if you're, you're making it one a day. Yeah, so. Um, I lost a lot of weight, and then I wanted to lose more, and it wouldn't happen. So for about a year, I ate about 1,200 calories a day, which it didn't do anything. I didn't lose not one pound. So obviously I, I should have done the four to six days of eating um, light and then ate regular a couple times. Can you reverse, can I reverse what I've done if my body is refusing to, to budge on this scale? Can I, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Your body's not refusing. You just may need an adjustment in your training. If you, if you're going in doing the same thing that you started, your body is requiring more now. So there may be an adjustment in your training and also an adjustment in your diet. And things need to be reevaluated. So you may need you may need to do a high low like Ben had recommended. Um, 
so that may get you past that that little plateau that you're experiencing. It just you need readjustment probably. So I haven't like messed it up forever. I can No, 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 absolutely not. No, your body hasn't shut down. It, your body wants to be healthy. It wants to be lean. It doesn't want to carry excess body fat. It really doesn't. You just need to figure out why you're plateauing. I had uh, an exercise metabolic laboratory that I ran over in Spokane for about four years, and we would test metabolic rates of people. And I did have a lot of folks come to me who were coming off either a liquid calorie diet or a very low calorie restricted diet. Um, and most of them, when we tested their metabolic rate, tested low, much lower than they should have been. Typically with training and nutrition, and we'd retest about every month or so, it was usually anywhere from two to four months before the metabolism actually started to increase and get closer to where it should be. So in terms of actual time frame, in my experience, that's what you'd be looking at as far as kind of resetting the button, as far as you know, taking care of your body calorically, hormonally, doing, doing smart exercise, and getting your metabolism back up to where it needs to be. I'm currently working on a Whole Foods program and it's called beyonddiet.com. And so they state that pretty much any kind of protein source is okay. So they state that bacon and stuff that I've normally thought of as foods to avoid if you're trying to lose weight, they're saying just go for it because it's a whole food as long as it doesn't have nitrates or nitrites. So I was wondering because that seemed wrong to me. In my opinion, <laughs> I absolutely disagree with that. Um, not all whole foods are good for you, like sugar. Um, you're getting a, an abundance of saturated fats in your diet, and that's not going to help you lose weight. We need to incorporate more healthy fats from plant-based foods. Avocados, olive oil, nuts, seeds, those things are going to actually help your body burn fat. So getting reducing the animal... Um, and I'm not just saying this because I choose a vegan diet, but when I work with clients who choose to eat um, food from animal sources, you, like Toby was saying, the grass-fed meats are going to be better for you. Your body's going to digest them um, and metabolize them easier. Um, the saturated fats are clogging your arteries, and it's slowing down your metabolism. So, yeah, I, I don't agree with that. Um, you can connect with me here at the Wellness Center, and I do nutrition um, consulting. I think Michael actually put a flyer over there, and um, one, one session with me, you actually get three. And I do dietary analysis, set up a new program for you, a new meal plan, and we, we discuss everything going on in your lifestyle, including you know, your exercise, your stress, your sleep all of those um, and take into consideration when setting up a new meal plan for you. Um, oftentimes people get really frustrated. It's too hard, it's too hard, I don't have enough time to cook, I don't have enough time to cook. I really help you um, figure that out and suggest foods that are going to be easy for you to prepare. I know that we're all very busy. We have children, we have work, um, husbands, you know, our spouses. So I take all those things into consideration. And I also believe that there's not one diet for every body. And it depends on your goals, where you're at, and uh, you know what you want to achieve. So you can find me here at the Wellness Center and set up an appointment with me, and we'll consult here. So, of course, I do offer naturopathic services and, uh, and acupuncture here at the Wellness Center. Um, I do uh, really you know, full intake with you, long history, go over uh, m you know, many things that a lot of uh, – you know, conventional medicine may not think that's important. We like to look at the body holistically uh, and then create treatment plans specific to you. Um, one of the things that I'm really good at is a lot of people start you know, taking a lot of different uh, nutritional supplements from a lot of different sources and they uh, end up having a whole bag full of supplements that I ask people to bring in and I can go through them and help organize and just make sure you're on the right track with things and, and, and get focused. Um, one thing I do want to share with you, I just, I just think it's important. I, I brought up about how uh, the, the SAD diet, and, and I grew up on the SAD diet. I had ho-hos for breakfast. I had two liters of, of, of soda a day. Um, I really did not eat anything uh, healthy at all. And for 
a number of different reasons, including emotional. Um, I always wanted to be a medical doctor, but I realized I didn't want to be practice that way, so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know about naturopathic medicine, but I ended up getting really sick after, um, after college. I, had Crohn's, I have Crohn's disease, and that's where the body attacks the intestines, and I was very, very sick, vomiting every day, a lot of diarrhea, stomach pain, um, and I had an amazing healing experience up in the mountains of Austria where my wife is from, and for the first time, I, I was stuck up there for a week without any you know, crap, and ate, uh, spelt, you know, really um, uh, good whole foods, um, drank spring water, um, real simple diet, and uh, kind of uh, really detoxed for a couple days, slept a lot. But after that, I, I didn't have pain. I didn't vomit. I didn't have diarrhea. Um, so it really, like, helped, helped me turn the corner and realize the benefits of, of, of changing your diet um, and, and uh, changing your lifestyle and um, getting a focus and purpose to your life. Uh, as soon as I got down from the mountain, I, I, uh, I don't think they had Google then. I don't know what the search engine was, but uh, you know, natural medicine college has got to be something, and that's where I found out about naturopathic medicine, the National College of Naturopathic Medicine. Um, I, I've been, I, I don't take any medications. I'm healthy um, and doing really good, and, and I can attest firsthand uh, from that experience how important it is uh, to make these changes. That's a pretty cool story. That's awesome. Um, you can find me at any of the local bars. I drink heavily. Can, can buy me a shot. Um, no, actually, I just go to bengreenfieldfitness.com, and I put a bunch of cards over there on the table, little green ones. I know some of you grabbed them because they're all gone. I've got more, so if you didn't get one, just come up and introduce yourself. I'll give you a card, but... If you go to bengreenfieldfitness.com, you'll get free articles and audio programs from me, a lot of exercise videos and things like that up on there, uh, stuff you're not going to find in any of the magazines like Men's Health or Women's Health or Cosmo because um, most of that stuff's just wrong. So I try and tell it to you the way it is at bengreenfieldfitness.com, and that's where you can go if you want to get some more information from me. Thanks for coming. I also can be uh, reached here or at my website, which is livingfromyoursoul.com. And there are also articles there uh, that you can read, a number of articles that may be useful. Uh, I've been practicing for 33 years and um, uh, been through a lot of different types of training, and they've all helped and they've all been good. But where I've landed um, is that... Uh, you have your own best answers, and my job is uh, to help you find those. And so um, when people come in, uh, of course, a, a lot of times there's uh, whatever the problem is, what goes along with that is what's wrong with me. And um, my, my hope is uh, when somebody comes in with that um, place and that weight, is uh, to use those issues that leave them feeling like something's wrong with them to uh, deepen self-knowledge, to restore trust, um, to find answers that maybe they would never have come across without those issues. Um, that um, uh, my message really to everyone is to trust the path wherever it leads. Sometimes that's very difficult. However, with the proper kind of support and uh, way of approaching things, uh, that trust can deepen in one's life and oneself. Oh, did you have one last thing? Um, I meant to say this earlier when we were talking about um, uh, sort of sports medicine and, and providers who can really help with the biomechanics. Our resident chiropractor, Dr. Hauser, uh, has extensive training and experience, and he's really good with that as well. So didn't want to forget to mention that. Thank you.